Hello, my name is John Buse. I'm from the University of North Carolina and I've been asked by IDOC to address the issue of the recent FDA hearing on the safety and efficacy of liraglutide, a once a day human GLP-1 analog being developed for the treatment of type 2 diabetes. Uh, this agent is novel in that it's the first human GLP-1 analog to be uh, submitted to the Food and Drug Administration. Um, it's created in a way that provides for a 24-hour profile of action, uh, so it can be administered once a day, um, and seems to be very effective in lowering A1C with A1C reductions more in the range of 1 to 1.5 percent um, in uh, the average patient with type 2 diabetes, the vast majority achieving A1Cs of less than 7 percent. So all that sounds really good. Um, the FDA uh, has uh, sort of increased the level of scrutiny with regards to cardiovascular disease and now requires for new products that at the time of initial review by the FDA they're able to exclude any possibility that there's a substantial increase in cardiovascular events associated with a new drug therapy. Because these new guidelines were developed while the liraglutide program was already underway um, the company hasn't been able to adjudicate cases and do all that kind of stuff exactly the way the FDA wanted to do it, but at the FDA hearing was able to present a great deal of data about cardiovascular events and the relative risk in liraglutide treated patients versus patients treated with other anti-diabetic agents versus patients treated with placebo. And the bottom line seems to be that overall the cardiovascular event rate seems to be less with liraglutide than with those comparators. But at the FDA hearing there was a lot of discussion about, you know, if we cut the data this way or if we cut the data that way. Um, there didn't seem to be any substantial signal of any problem in the cardiovascular arena. Uh, but that, you know, that was one area of controversy. And the second area of controversy was around uh, medullary thyroid cancer. In rats and mice, uh, those rodents develop medullary thyroid cancer at uh, a modest rate. Uh, so let's say if you are a middle-aged or older rat, your chances of having uh, that kind of cancer is a few percent. Um, in, uh, in humans, medullary thyroid cancer is virtually as rare as hen's teeth. Uh, it occurs largely in a familial setting and uh, sporadic cases are, are, are highly unusual. I, I mean, I've personally never seen a case myself in a diabetes-oriented practice. Um, but in those ro rodent models, when they were treated with liraglutide, uh, there was an increase in the risk of uh, medullary thyroid cancers um, in rats in particular, and also a signal of an increase in mice. Does this have any relevance to human, uh, human disease? Uh, that's something that we can't answer for sure, uh, but what they were able to present data uh, regarding was that there doesn't seem to be any effect of liraglutide to increase calcitonin, a marker of medullary uh, thyroid cancer, um, and that there were no cases of uh, medullary thyroid cancer in the patients exposed to liraglutide. In fact, there was one case uh, in a control patient uh, on another product. Um, so uh, I think the human data is very reassuring that there isn't any signal, but it's very hard to disprove or to prove a negative to show that something doesn't happen. Um, so the animal data has people a bit concerned, the human data is uh, quite reassuring, um, and now uh, the FDA is uh, grappling with issues of labeling and whether the drug is approvable um, in this setting. You know, personally, I think, uh, you know, I think the overall data look pretty good. Uh, the safety concerns seem manageable, um, and uh, my hope is that this will move forward in the near future. So for IDOC, this has been John Buse. Thank you very much.